Okay. Good morning. I'm going to be talking today to you about the role of digitalization in education and especially in underserved communities. So this is essentially the topic and I'm going to introduce myself and then take you through some ideas and some suggestions. And at the end of it, especially if you're an educator here in the room, like I am, I would love to get some of your participation in this as well, because it's not just ideas about what we're doing to provide digitalization as tools and how that helps students in underserved communities, but also it's about how to build your own competence and your own ability to help students in the future. Now, where I come from, I work at the Cotejo. I'm a professor up at the Shista ICT School, now the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. But I teach and do research in a number of different areas. My science that I'm looking at is I'm looking at how do you design future information technology products. So in other words, I'm one of these guys that's subjecting you to all this digitalization stuff. The things you buy and stick in your apartment, the software that you're running, the devices you run it on. I'm interested in what are these things going to be in the future? And I'll warn you in advance, it's everything. It's everything you're going to touch. It's everything you're going to wear. It's everything you're going to live in. It's everything you're going to drive. And it's everything you're going to interact with. So it's extremely broad. On the other side of the coin, I'm very interested in, as an educator, how to be able to allow my students to do this and what is going to be the effect on them intellectually, personally, and how do they go out and then change society? What kind of communities are they going to build with this? What are the consequences? So those are the things that I work in. And those are the things that I do in Shista. Now, when we talk about underserved areas, what do we really mean? And you might think we're only talking about you know, specific areas. Typical indicators of students that are working and, and trying to learn in schools in underserved areas are statistics like these. And these are very real, about how we see that three out of 10 students do not graduate from high school. And we also see things like 40% of Swedish youth in certain areas, you know, don't feel that they have any role in society. Well, that's true. This is real data. But these are also things that I see every day. You might think, oh yeah, Mark, what do you know about that? You're off in the ivory tower. But you know what? My students fit this as well. Because in a recent article that came out of the KDH itself, they pointed out that about something in the order of 50% of the students that come into the university don't finish. They drop out. And they're not stupid. There's a reason. And the reason is, is because the school isn't meeting their needs. And this is what we need to think about. Why not? And what is the role that we have to have as educators that's going to keep them there? Because when you really think about it, if a university in Sweden isn't meeting the needs of its students, what does it say for the rest of the schools? And what does it say about our business as educators? So we have, to take a, we have to take a look at this and really start to understand what are the new tools and what are the new ways that we need to be able to inspire kids to stay in the educational process so that they can be properly enabled to have a positive impact on society. Okay, so why? What are the reasons for this? Why are they giving up? Well, there's a whole lot of them. One of them is this, is that the students in the culture that they're in have community roots. That's always been the case. You're a member of a community, you're a member of a social order. You're part of it, whether it's your family, whether it's your neighborhood, whether it's the part of the city you live in, you're there. And it doesn't matter what the economic base is, it's you are a member of that. But the big problem is, is that that rarely has any connection to what happens in school. Did your teacher come from the neighborhood you lived in? Do they really understand you and your family? Do they really understand the challenges that are going on in the neighborhood you live in? In underrepresented area, the answer is almost always no. These sorts of things don't, are, are not taught in teacher education programs. Hmm. And so really what happens is, is that the students come in with a certain viewpoint of who they are, where they come from, how do they fit into the community itself, and it doesn't match to anything that's going on in the school. And this happens all the time. You hear it, I hear it from my students. 
I spend years, they say, listening to a math teacher. I look at math, I look at physics. What does it mean? It has no meaning. There's nothing I can, I can apply it to. I don't see how it affects my life on a daily basis. And remember, these kids are very connected. Digitalization is already part of their lives. They're connected by social media, and they're connected by ways of communicating that guys of my generation, we could only dream of. So they're already using digitalization, but it has no connection to what they're doing. So in effect, because they go into school and they don't see that connection, they don't see how the, the information helps them understand the world they're in, and in fact often criticizes them for it, they feel that they're invisible to society. Why am I here? What am I for? Now, digitalization can be a powerful tool to solve it. But the whole thing about it is, is that you have to use it right. Digitalization allows you to do the following things. It allows you to individualize the educational process, okay? But by individualizing, I don't mean just for one student. Yeah, I'm going to understand you. I'm going to track you on the internet. I'm going to look at everything you read. I'm going to look at all of your test scores. Nah, not really. What I'm really meaning here is, can I sit down and individualize the educational experience across the school? Can I really make that school now say, aha, what is my position as a school here in this part of the city, in this community? And what is my relationship to the students themselves? That's what I mean by that. Tools for experimenting. Ah, oh, yeah, that's one of the beautiful things about all of this, these digital devices and all these digital methods. I can now make theory come alive. I can now allow the students to do things in an applied, hands-on way. They can start to see the connection. And I can allow my educators to do that as well. The other thing is, is that I can then leverage from the experience of others and build ability. Now, that's a key thing. That's a very, very key thing. Is building ability, if I have students with ability, they're going to go out and accomplish things. And that's what the community needs, people that are able to do that. But what I have to be able to do is somehow they have to leverage from the experience of others. Digitalization will allow that to happen. And then also, through all of this, because it's so connected and because now people can interact and because I can start to see these things, I then can allow the students to connect to the school and the community within that context. That's the most important thing. It means something to them. So that's what these can be. Now, digital resources and methods are only tools. They're not things in them themselves that is a goal. They're only a tool to get you somewhere else. So the big question is, is how do I use these tools properly? The effectiveness of this in the educational process depends on how the tools are used. So how do you do it? Well, the way we see it is that there must be strong community and social ties. Digital tools, students, what else? Teachers, sure, the school, but there has to be more. It has to be tied to the community. And there also have to be educators who can use the digital tools. I get into conversations with educators all the time, and I find out that the level of literacy in using the digital tools is very, very low. In fact, I would almost suggest that the level of digital literacy in Sweden is less than 10%. Hmm. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, the way we've done it is we have an experimental organization called the Shista Mentor Space. And I'm going to show you some of the experiments that we've been doing. It's an interesting knowledge sharing space that actually brings digitalization into the underserved communities. And I'm going to use that as an example. The Mentor Space is run by a small startup company. It's a, it's a nonprofit company that came out of the KTH. So you'll see on the slides, Inicio. Inicio is a Spanish word. It means the beginning. And these are the people that actually run the Mentor Space and interact with students, teachers, and the community. And they're the actors that make it all go. So what is the Mentor Space? The Mentor Space is the following. In, my, in the science that I do, where I'm looking at how am I going to design all those digital devices that everybody's going to be using in the future, it isn't a single skill. It isn't a single thing. It isn't just some next technology that's going to come from someplace. It's everybody. I need, in addition to computer geeks, I also need 
artists. I need writers. I need fashion designers. I need people who design cities, city architects, building architects. I need vehicle designers. I need everything because these, this digitalization, this information technology is going into everything. But I don't have all that at my school. Also, I'm finding out that the expertise to do this transcends age. It transcends gender. It transcends where you came from. So what the Shista Mentor Space is, is it's a knowledge sharing space. It's not a maker space, although we have a lot of equipment in it because we want to be able to do hands-on learning. But at the same time, it's primarily there for students from all background, without regard for where they came from or their age or their gender or their background or their degrees to be able to share their knowledge. Because it's through that that they start to see a cloud of dots. How are my interests, how are my hopes and dreams connected to yours? I might be an embedded system designer because I go to KDH. You might be a ceramics and glass artist because you go to Kunstfach. And you might be a high school student who understands the latest programming language from Google. Bringing them all together allows them to start to share the knowledge on common problems. In other words, one key component has to be academia, but it has to be the schools across a wide spectrum, not just in one spot. That's one key thing for the mentor space. Another role is industry. I've got to have industry in there as well. Why industry? Because industry is part of the economic base of these communities. They're the ones that are steering where the jobs are going to be. What occupations do I need? What communities are going to look like are very much a function of who works there. Now, these have to be local industries. So what I do is I bring them in. Now, I spent a lot of time in industry. I spent 21 years in oof, one of the worst places, Silicon Valley. So I know a lot about the role of industry in society and how it shapes it. Everybody loves the idea of a Silicon Valley, but have you ever been there? Have you ever seen the kind of community it is? Do you really want that? Okay, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But all I'm saying is, is that in order to have an effective education system and an effective use of the digitalization, one of the most effective users is local industry. And it doesn't matter. They don't have to be technical. We have a lot of those in Shista. But it can be the guy running the Korv stand too because he's part of that community. And they have to come in and they have to share their problems. They have to share their experience and say, this is the role of technology and knowledge in our space. And they're very digitally enabled because their businesses rely on it. And then finally, the community leaders themselves. So this, in this picture, we have leaders from the Raoul Wallenberry Academy coming in and talking about some social projects that they want to be able to do to bring the community together and bring the people together communicating. But in other words, I need the, the city and the social community designers themselves. They have to be in talking to the students and saying, these are our problems. So in addition to industry saying, this is how we need to grow, the community architects are saying, these are the problems we have. We have to solve this kind of integration problem. We have to have this equal access problem. We have to make people aware of basic human rights. How does technology come into that? So in other words, in an effective progressive education environment of the future, to combine digitalization in, I need the triple helix. I have to have academics, industry, and community developers all working together. And they do that in my classes. My classes are all done in this space. And people of all ages from all schools are welcome to come into that space, including industry and the community developers. She's to Science City is there a lot. And we work together to learn technology. And the students start to see, these are my hopes and dreams. Now I see the connection to the community. Now I see the role. The other thing is we call it the mentor space for a very important reason, okay? Mentoring is key. The mentors come from anyone. Because here's one thing I noticed in Silicon Valley. When you think about Silicon Valley, we think about the greats, the Steve Jobs, the Bill Gates, heck, Silicon Valley is full of successful people, the kind of people you want helping your communities grow. But no successful person got there without being mentored by someone. 
And you guys know that. You're successful yourselves. Did you get there alone? No. So as part of the educational process, you have to have mentors coming in. They have to be sharing their experience. They have to be sharing people like me. I went through this, especially if you struggled in school. That's an important thing, because many of us did. And for having students be able to say, yeah, I see a need to stay in school, but oh, I'm not smart. I'm no good. I don't have what it takes. Well, to have a mentor in there saying, yeah, I was like you, but I made it. So mentoring is there and it's long term. The students coming into the space know they can always come back and find their mentor. Lifelong, if that's what they need. So this is important. The other thing is, is that the students mentor themselves, not just across ages, big wide ages, but also at the same age. Mentors come of all ages, but in this case, they're sharing knowledge. They're sharing, how did I solve things in my classes? How did I solve particular ways of, of designing or building things? So in this particular session, you can see here's a special seminar where one group of students is mentoring others in design methods. This is above and beyond the curriculum, but that's absolutely important because the students sharing knowledge among themselves, if you're an educator, well, at some American universities, that's called cheating. Here, it's called learning. And that's an important point. Okay, and then a couple of examples. Where are we going with this? To get the community involved and to show the connection of students in these underserved communities, how they can help the community and what their role in it is. So here's a couple of examples I wanted to bring up. What we're going to be doing to learn more about how this method of education works and how this method of engagement works, what the mentor space and Inicio and myself at the KDH, what we're going to be doing is a project, two of them here I'm going to tell you about. One of them is a high school senior projects effort in Sotatelia. And another one is a winter camp proposed for the Versity project in NACA. This is a proposal, but we hope to be able to do it. So what's going on? This is an example of how we get the community engaged and how we get kids in these schools engaged in it. So in this particular case in, so in Sotatelia, we're going to be working with a large number of high school students who are doing their gymnasia arbeite, their senior projects, as we say in English. But what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to say, how do we tie these things to real processes? How do we able to tie these things to the needs of the community and other things? And what they're going to be doing is using a lot of digital tools. It's going to be a couple of hundred high school students that now are going to be able to say, how can I show my mastery of what I've learned in school? And they're going to do it by connecting it to the community. So in this particular case, we're going to be looking at real life cases. We're going to be working with Industry, and so to tell you, there's quite a few. There's manufacturing, there's pharmaceuticals, there's medical. And then, of course, there's the industry that's just there on the street and in the city itself. So we're going to be taking real-life cases of what those people need. What, maybe it's healthcare. Maybe it's got something to do with the automotive vehicular industry. Maybe it's got something to do with pharmaceuticals. But actually bringing in the industry leaders as part of this senior project, and they're going to be providing mentoring. They're going to be providing, here are the problems we need to solve. And of course, the city itself. So Detelia wants to have a lot of development. They want to be able to really change some of the economic directions of the city. So they're going to be in there too, participating. So the students are going to see the connection to, what have I been learning? How does that apply to the city? And how does that apply to the economic base that drives the city? And that's how we're going to be able to bring them in and show them, I have a role here. I have a future here. So that's just one of this. And this will be going on for that entire year when the senior projects are taking place. Another one, this is really kind of interesting. We have a lot of good relationships with our local industry. One of the really nice things about being up in Shista is because there's so many companies up there. Not just global companies, not just multinational companies, but local ones too. One company called Yancey Systems, Yancey Networks, they came to us and they said, hey, you guys in the mentor space, we work with a lot, of these, a lot of these companies. They come to the mentor space, of course, to contribute their knowledge and to mentor the students. They said, what would you do with 4,000 smart light bulbs? Ooh, we get donations every now and then, but this is something, 4,000. These are, these are light bulbs with an IPv6 protocol stack stuck in them. 
and they talk back to a gateway, and the whole idea is to be able to, well, manage the energy of lighting in your building. They have 4,000 of these up to, what would we do with them? So, yeah, we're going to do something with them. We've been brainstorming different kinds of applications. What would you do? 4,000 4, light bulbs would cover a couple of football fields. If you wanted to make a video game or some kind of an interactive game out of it, you could see it from outer space. I mean, this is a lot of light bulbs. But what we're thinking about is NACA, the Versity Project, if we could go in there and do this, what would we do? And NACA is interesting because there's a lot of industry there. There's a lot of industry there that wants to be able to stay in the community and attract talent from the schools. Again, the students. Why am I here? What am I doing here? One of the big industries in NACA is fashion. The fashion industry that's there. And I've worked with these guys before. I used to have a project going with Maladal and Technikska Hogskola a few years ago called Beyond Fashion, where we looked at the role of information technology in fashion design. What we want to be able to do here is say, well, what else can we do? How can we show the students the connection of something like fashion and the fashion industry to what they're learning in school? And again, establish that connection. And there's a ton of digitalization that's going to be used in that. So one of the ideas we have is redesign the whole idea of a fashion show runway, where the models are coming down showing the fashion. Can we make that interactive? Well, we're going to have the light bulbs, of course, and we can do a lot with very interesting lighting and a lot of other things using sensors, actuators, and other kinds of electromechanical, mechatronics things. So as the model moves with the fashion, maybe even the fashion is enabled. After all, IT is already in the clothes that you're wearing. You may not know it, but many of you have electronic devices right now in what you've got on. Aha! Now, what does that do? Well, you can think about it. How does that connect to the school? Everything we do connects to the agenda of Skolverka. We might want to make sure it's very much there to enforce the learning outcomes. So here, of course, there's programming, but a lot more than that. There's also embedded systems, there's electronics, there's fashion, there's art, there's storytelling, there's design. You see what I mean? All of this comes together. There's a cloud of dots. It's all connected. So if your passion as a youngster is fashion and design and storytelling, now all of a sudden you see that connection between technology and systems. Wow, that's the reason I want to stay in school. And look what I can do. So we're going to get those students across many different schools involved in this project. We're going to be doing that with their teachers. We're going to be doing it across different age groups, as many students as we can get. And they're all going to be working together, again, with the triple helix. But that's a way to bring digitalization into the school and really show the relevance between school, community, and what you're going to be in future life. Now, if you're an educator, this is something I'd like to ask for you. Would you like to help us form a network of educators that want to answer the question, what's the right way to use these digital tools? Like I say, I've got tons of students that are making them. What's the right way to use them? We don't have all the answers. The mentor space is just an experiment. Hmm. What's the right things to do with it? So if you're an educator or a concerned person and you would like to join a network of people that can help us answer these questions, I would love it if you'd come and join us. So what I want to know is what are the experiments we should try? What other kind of data should we get? How do we know that we're doing the right thing? And what should we be trying now in the classrooms that you run? How do we share that experience? Because one of the big things we do is, and want to do more of, is teacher training. You guys, if you're an educator, you need to know how to use these digital tools too. We all do. What is the right way to share that experience so that you can integrate digitalization, digital ideas into what you teach? The idea is not to turn you into a computer scientist. The idea is to turn you into an excellent educator. Mm -hmm. What data should we collect to know that we're doing the right thing? How do we measure it? I'm a scientist. I got to have data. That's the only way. If my data speaks, I can convince you that what I'm doing is right. And then finally, the barriers not being addressed. There's so many barriers. What are the barriers to bringing digitalization into our systems? What are the things? Is it fear? Is it inertia? What? How do we identify those barriers and how do we solve them? 
These are all open questions that I don't have the answer for, but I'd love to work with you on these things. So finally, come on over and talk to Inicio, talk to us at KDH. The Shista Mentor Space is open. It's up in Shista, just drop in or send me email. And of course, come to the panel discussion after this. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. You're going to stay on stage because...